it's Flo, and this is my impression of a drill instructor directing a musical. Town hut! Get those tap heels in line and let me see those jazz hands! Are you bundling your home and auto insurance through Progressive? Can you hear me through those sequins? Bundle your home and auto through Progressive and save. Left, 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 and step ball change. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates. Home insurance provided and serviced by other select insurers. Lock Hello. Radio. This, this is, is the Samuel Brown. Oh, you're listening to the Samuel Brock Flynn Show on air. We have on air right now, I'm Samuel here, Samuel Brock Flynn, um, talking about the uh, Cashless Society um, with Lowell Ponte. And here he is. How are you, Lowell? Hey, hello, Samuel. Samuel, it's good to be with you again. Yes, sir. Good to be with you. Um, uh, so so I am co-author of a book called Don't Bank on It, The Unsafe World of 21st Century Banking. Most people think that the bank is the safest place to put your money. In fact, in reality, it's the most dangerous place you could keep your money. Yes. There are 20 major fatal risks to keeping your money in the bank, everything from hackers uh, to the government itself, which requires your bank to spy on you, uh, to the fact that under zero interest rate policy, as we have now, your bank is paying you essentially nothing in interest to put your money uh, at risk of those 20 major risks. So we have a world where, for example, China right now has 125,000 cyber warriors in their military whose only job is to sit in front of a computer all day and hack into Western companies, Western governments, and Western banks. And they steal from all of them. They garble the data in all of them. And we don't even know how many secret bugs they have hidden in our computer systems. We do know that when computers have broken down because of one or another of those bugs, it usually turns out the bug was planted at least nine months earlier, and no one even detected it. And so we don't know how vulnerable we are. We know, though, that by giving your money to a bank, it becomes incredibly unsafe. For one thing, it ceases to be money. It just becomes little electronic blips in the bank's computer. And those blips can be uh, destroyed by any number of things. In 1859, for example, there was a giant flare on the sun. And shortly thereafter, all of the telegraph systems in the world malfunctioned. At the time, that was the closest thing they had to a computer in 1859, in the days before the Civil War, when it was still the Wild West here. Uh, But we did have telegraphs. And the telegraphs, well, for example, began throwing sparks, began setting fire to the, uh, the little wooden shacks they were typically placed in. And that was all because of solar activity. Now, that could happen again. And if it happened again, it would be very much like electromagnetic pulse from atomic weapons. It would just knock everything out. In fact, most people don't understand if you took even a tiny atomic weapon, say one-tenth the size of what was used on Hiroshima back in the 1940s, and you detonated that 100,000 feet up in the atmosphere, something terrorists could do just sending it up on a weather balloon, a big weather balloon, Uh, that detonation would create electromagnetic pulse that, for example, if it were set off in the right place, could knock out, fry the circuitry of every computer from Chicago to New York City to Washington, D.C. I mean, you could literally shut down the computers in that big a circle. And in a world where we've made ourselves totally dependent on computers without ever finding out whether they have staying power, whether they have some deadly Achilles heel vulnerability that would let some enemy shut them down all at once, uh, we've made ourselves incredibly vulnerable. And that means, among other things, your bank account is incredibly vulnerable. Now, they may as well be computer digits today because you've probably noticed our government is rushing 
to achieve a thing they call the cashless society. In Sweden yes. today, in Sweden today, only about three percent of all transactions are still done in money, cash money. You know, bills and coins you take out of your pocket. Everything else is electronic. It's a credit card. It's an electronic transfer from your cell phone or the like, or it's a check. But but it's not money in the traditional ancient government sense of the term. In the U.S., we are only 7% away from being cashless. That is, 93% of all our transactions are conducted without money, or with money, I should say. And, and those are usually buying a hamburger at Carl's Jr., uh, or buying some, uh, you know, some coffee at a coffee stand. All big transactions are now carried out, at least legal transactions, are carried out electronically or by transfer documents of some kind. And why is that? Well, one reason we just inadvertently touched on. About 19% of all the commerce in the U.S. is black market. It's drug dealers, right. it's prostitution, it's tax evasion people. Uh, the government wants to shut all of that down so that you cannot carry out transactions in secret anymore. So once we get to a cashless society where everything's electronic, all those computers will be attached to the government. And if you, for example, have a high school graduate of a son or daughter, and you want to give them $100 as a gift, you will have to give it to them electronically in this fast-approaching future, and the government will probably reach in and tax 20% of it. So you'll authorize $100 for them, and they'll actually get 80 transferred into their account as the government snatches 20% of it. That will just be routine. So so there will be no private financial activity anymore that's legal. It will be a crime to use money, in other words. And we saw an example of that recently with the former Speaker of the House, Republican Denny Hastert of Illinois, who was arrested for the crime of taking his own money out of his own bank account in order to pay a blackmailer who who was blackmailing him with information about his private life. But the point is he was arrested and sentenced to, I think, 15 months in prison, and he's, what, about 80 years old. But he was sentenced to 15 months in prison for the crime of what they call structuring. The government has all kinds of rules about how your bank has to report anything you're doing that's out of the ordinary. Your bank is literally required to spy on you for the government. Oh, that's one other reason why it's not terribly wise to have a bank account. Uh, But we've now entered an age where with the 20 risks of having a bank account that we write about in our book, uh, most people would actually be stupid to have a bank account. They're stealing your privacy. They're putting your savings at enormous risk and they're paying you nothing. They're paying you, what, one-tenth of one percent uh, in interest for, for, for lending them your money to spend. Uh, and we're on the verge now, they've already begun it in Europe, of below zero or negative interest rates, meaning you will no right. longer be able to just have a bank account and be paid for it the way it used to be, you'll actually have to pay the bank to take your money and lend it out to other people, and you'll get nothing. Right. And this this is the world we're rapidly entering into for those who still think they can live uh, with the old-fashioned idea of money. The old-fashioned idea of money is almost gone entirely. What we now have is a newfangled world that seems remarkably like the Bible's book of Revelation, where it says people will be given the mark of the beast, and only those with the mark of the beast will be able to buy or sell. Well, kids, guess what the cashless society really is? It's the mark of the beast. Uh, you will not legally be able to carry out any transaction without the government being party to that transaction, without you having the mark of the beast in your computer file. And where that leads, well, it pretty much leads straight to hell, as the Bible suggests. Uh, In this case, of course, the beast is the government, 
and it, it's a rather uh, rather troublesome future we're headed into. Uh, there, there are not a whole lot of ways to avoid this going out of government money. See, the trick of the government is it forces you to use its money, not your own. Otherwise, you could just mint your own gold coins. You know, we could have Samuel coins, and that would all be legal. But the government does not allow you to do that. In fact, it jails people who try to do that nowadays. Uh, and uh, therefore, we have this very troublous society in which the government controls all the money. And, oh, how does the government enforce it? It insists that all those heavy taxes it puts on you and me be paid only in the government's official money. And therefore, you're required to have a lot of the government's money to pay your taxes. They will not let you pay your taxes in euros uh, or Krugerrands or anything else. It has to be in U.S. currency, as translated through the cashless society. So, welcome to tomorrow. We're already almost there. Sweden is within 3% of being there, which is why in our book, Don't ca- don't uh, Bank on It, The Unsafe World of 21st Century Banking, we actually wrote a section on what would happen if Jesse James and his gang of bank robbers tried today to rob a bank in Stockholm. The odds are they'd come in and they'd pull their guns and they'd say, give us all your money in this bag, and everyone would just laugh. And they'd say, don't you understand? Our banks in Sweden don't have money anymore. All we have is electronic transfer. Uh, we haven't seen an actual uh, Swedish kroner or whatever it is they call their currency uh, for 10 years here. And the funny thing is, as we suggest, Jesse James suddenly finds the bank surrounded by Swedish police and says, well, we have to fight our way out. And the bank manager says, no, 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 we can help you with that. Just throw down your guns, and we'll just tell the bank, you came in here to rob us of money. And everybody will laugh hysterically, because everybody knows there is no money in this bank. And you will then be set free on grounds that you're mentally ill. Only a crazy person would would have even tried to get money out of this bank. And so they'll let Jesse James go. But but that's the future we're very close to now and that the government is pushing very hard to achieve. Right. Um, I know according to the Bible we're supposed to trust and obey your government, but should we we, um, trust them? um, Are we supposed to trust our government to a certain point? You mean in the book of Romans where St. Paul says, people be obedient unto your rulers, God has put them over you. Jesus never said that. That was St. Paul. See, see, my problem is I'm what I've always called since childhood a Christian. You show me those words in red in the Bible that are what Jesus said, that's what I believe in. I personally think St. Paul was a nut. Uh, I don't believe anything St. Paul said. So that that's a minor distinction that's entirely mine. It's not that of my co-author or anyone else uh, in this right. matter. What, what Jesus said is when the, uh, the scribes and Pharisees tried to trap him, they came up to him and said, we know how we're going to get Jesus. We're going to ask him, should we pay the tax to the Romans or not? And if Jesus says, you shouldn't pay the tax, well, then his followers will love him, but the Romans will arrest him, because it's it's against the law to tell people not to pay the tax. On the other oh, yeah. hand, if he, if he, on the other hand, if Jesus says, do pay the tax, well, then his followers will feel betrayed, and they'll stop following him. So they ask him, you know, should we pay the tax to the Romans or not? And Jesus says, you have money in your pocket. Show me a coin. And they pull out the coin. And Jesus says, okay, whose face is on the coin? Oh, Caesar's face, the leader of the Romans. Well, yeah. then render, render on to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and on to God that which is God's. 
And having given this perfect answer that gets him out of the trap, Jesus turns and walks away. And the scribes are, are left looking foolish. Uh, but that will be an interesting question. You know, the government has taken the attitude that basically all money is the government's. That right. even if it's you not... earned the money, and even if you have the money in your bank account, as long as the money is based on the government, uh, the government has the right to take it back anytime they wish. In fact, that's how they they were able to break people away from the era that made America great, which was the era set up by our founding fathers, in which they specified that money is precious metal. That's right. a very important distinction. Uh, there was a time, in the time of your uh, grandparents or great-grandparents, where if you were given a $20 bill or a $50 bill, it would say right on it, you know, this is simply a note that you can go to the government and exchange for money, and this note is worth $50 in gold. And the real money was the gold, according to the government. Right. Uh, which was very nice because gold was international currency. You could go anywhere on the planet and spend it. No one would question the value of gold. Uh, and it gave you a great deal of independence. You know, you were not a prisoner of the government, and it was very difficult for the government to steal the gold from you, therefore. Uh, I mean, they could impose heavy taxes, but they couldn't do what they do now. Which, for example, in the last eight years, your government has printed out of thin air, out of nowhere, an additional $8 trillion and added that to the debt. Now, what does that mean? Well, there are some things that even the government can't do. For example, Congress cannot repeal the law of gravity. Personally, right. I wish they could. I wouldn't have to diet as much. But they can't. I mean, things are going to weigh what they weigh. And likewise, they cannot repeal the economic law of supply and demand. What that means is, yes, government, through the welfare state and other means, can give everybody twice as many dollars as you have now. And so you'd think everybody's twice as rich, right? Well, if you're the first person to get to the supermarket, that might be true. But the moment the, the people who sell things realize there are now twice as many dollars in circulation. All that means is that the head of cabbage that used to cost you a dollar at the supermarket uh, in 24 hours is going to cost you two dollars because they now know everybody has twice as many dollars. And so when the government prints money, as it's been doing, I mean, eight trillion dollars is a lot of money, a lot yeah. of money. I mean, uh, that... That uh, basically has the effect of just debasing the value of the dollar for everyone. Like Richard Nixon thought he could pull the last vestige of the gold standard out from under the dollar in 1971. Because the French and a few other countries were saying, we still have, co your citizens can't convert their dollars to gold anymore. But we, as European central banks, we still can do that. And in the next few months, we think we're going to come over and just ask you to empty Fort Knox in order to convert all the dollars that we've been collecting in France. And so Nixon, rather than lose whatever may or may not be left in Fort Knox, just said, well, to hell with it. I am now ending the last convertibility <coughs> of dollars to gold. Now, what happened? Well, the dollar lost a third of its value almost immediately in purchasing power. Uh, as of about the time we wrote this book, we did the analysis, and I think then it was what you could buy for a dollar in 1971, just before Nixon did that, by last year would have cost you more than $5.71 to buy. In other words, the dollar was reduced by almost five-sixths of its value. Now, since we live right. with it day by day, we usually just sit around and say, gee, how come hamburger now costs more than steak used to? 
gee, how come everything's more expensive? Well, it's more expensive because the government is funding itself just by printing money out of thin air. And then it takes that right. money and spends it. And by the time you get it, it's debased. See, the government loves doing that. In fact, we wrote a whole book about that, too, come to think of it. It was a book on inflation. Uh, and that book, let's see, that was called The Inflation Deception. Yeah. And the essence of that book is government doesn't even need to tax you anymore if it wants. All it needs to do is keep printing money. Because the most powerful thing the government has is not missiles or bombers, it's a printing press and the legal right to print money that you and I don't have. And therefore, if the government wants money, it just prints it. And that screws everybody else down the line who had been saving their money. That That's, in fact, extremely cunning, because remember I said almost one out of five people in the society, 19% live in the black market. They're making money under the table. And so you say, the government will never be able to tax that money except by a sales tax somewhere. No, no, no. The government taxes that money every day. And it does right. it by inflation. It does it – I mean, you may have hidden a bunch of money under the floor, beneath the closet, back at the end of the hall, and you think nobody knows it's there. The government knows it's there, even though they don't know you're the person who may have it. They know there's a lot of money out there. So they just print more. And when they do that, when they print a few trillion dollars more, that just drastically cuts the value of the money you have hidden under the floor yeah. at the end of the hall. In other words, they are taxing you via inflation. I mean, it's a very sinister, evil kind of taxation because it hits the poor people hardest and it hits the people who work hard and save their money the hardest. They're the ones who get shafted by that. Uh, but the government doesn't care. The government is made up of politicians and bureaucrats. They're perfectly happy to shaft hardworking people. Uh, but this is all part of what goes on through international banking and part of what goes on. I mean, when the government prints more money, it does it with the authorization and cooperation of the Federal Reserve, our central bank. Which, God help him, Andrew Jab. By the way, this is one of the great ironies in this. Just in recent months, we've had this discussion of should we take the pictures of, say, President Andrew Jackson off the $20 bill and put some radical feminist like Harriet Tubman on. And they finally decided we're going to do that now in the next few years. Uh, it's amusing because Andrew Jackson was the man who fought against our ever having a central bank. He's the one who protected the United States for almost 100 years from having European-style yeah. financial corruption here. Uh, but he is now going to be replaced on the bill. Of course, the, P, the liberals who have done that don't appreciate that Harriet Tubman was not only a courageous uh, black woman and former slave who helped free people on the Underground Railroad in slave times, Harriet Tubman was also a huge advocate of guns. She carried guns with her wherever she went. Uh, but, of course, those people who want to take away your gun and mine uh, say nothing about the fact they would have taken away Harriet Tubman's guns, too. Yeah. Then if they've been able to. It's the way, for example, they uh, they glorify Susan B. Anthony, uh, another feminist. Her picture is also going to be on a dollar. In fact, they already put it on one of those dollar coins that nobody ever used. But they don't mention about Susan B. Anthony that, A, like Harriet Tubman, she was a Republican. She was not a Democrat. And, B... <laughs> In the case of Susan B. Anthony, she was ardently opposed to abortion. The Obama administration would be seek, seeking spies on her because she was an anti-abortion activist. They don't wow. tell you much about that in school either, do they? No. <clears throat> but th this is what uh, what it makes our time so interesting. By the way, the book on banking is our former book, our current book, 
out and which we'd be happy to give any of your listeners absolutely free and postpaid, Samuel, uh, is called We Have Seen the Future and It Looks Like Baltimore. You remember the riots in Baltimore a year ago? Oh, During yeah. those riots, the, the liberal Democrat mayor uh, stepped aside and said, I'm ordering the police to stand down. We're just going to let the rioters loot whatever stores they want to loot. Uh, the murder rate has gone up by something like 47% in Baltimore. Wow. The number of arrests by police has gone down by more than 30%. <clears throat> Baltimore now has more murders than New York City, which has 13 times more people than Baltimore, because the progressives have taken over completely. And what used to be the highest tech city in the United States long ago is now the heroin capital of the U.S. One out of every ten people in Baltimore is a heroin addict, as was Freddie Gray when when he died following police custody. Uh, So progressives, the subtitle of this book is American Dream versus Progressive Dream. We explain the power of the American Dream, our founder's vision, that government must be small, people must be big, we must be responsible for ourselves. Uh, We should not have a gigantic welfare state. Uh, People should be free. People should have rights here. That's all being replaced by the progressives. The progressives were a collective movement that originally came out of Europe. In Europe, it metastasized into other collectivist movements, such as Nazism, communism, socialism, welfare state socialism, as we're now adopting here. Uh, They believe the individual is nothing, and the group is everything that you, for example, Samuel, don't even exist as an individual. You only exist based on what politically correct groups you belong to. What is your race? What is your political orientation? Uh, Which of 26 different sexual identities, transgender or whatever, do you belong to? That's what defines you, are collectivized things. So the group is everything, the individual is nothing. And the government, of course, is a giant nanny state. And the problem is when you create a paternalistic government that gives you everything you need, then if the government is the, is the parent, then the people are the children. You wind up with an infantilized society of helpless people who go into a university classroom, and they're scared to death. We don't want anyone to mention any idea we haven't already agreed with. We have to have safe zones. We have to stop microaggressions of people daring to disagree with us. That's the kind of society progressives have built today. And what it inevitably leads to, of course, is social collapse. You can't run a society very long like that. Because the people just become gimme pigs. The people just sit there and say, Give me money, give me food, give me housing, give me free education. And after a while, there's nobody left to pay for that. There's nobody left actually doing the work to produce anything. So you have a lot of takers and very few makers. And the makers all flee to other countries. The irony of this, of course, is how did our ancestors get here? Oh, they were fleeing other countries that weren't free. They came here seeking freedom. Well, now we are, we're, thanks to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, we are becoming the countries our ancestors fled from. And so we shouldn't be surprised when the productive and enterprising and inventive people here now decide it's time to flee to the next free country. That's entirely right. the fault yep. of the people on the left. But anyway, those are my thoughts for today. And if people would like to get an absolutely free copy of this amazing book, We Have Seen the Future and It Looks Like Baltimore, you just call a toll-free number. And we'll be happy to pay for the postage and everything. It's totally free. The number is 1-800-630-1494. That's 1-800-630-1494. Or as I like to say, think of Columbus sailing the ocean blue in 1492, but not quite. It's one 800 630 
1494. And we'll be happy to send you a copy of the Baltimore book. All righty. That sounds good. And uh, don't worry about that timer. We still have a good, good uh, few minutes. So it'll go into like an after show. What that means is like a kind of like still live, but just recorded live still. So, okay, you there, sir? What to what to what questions do you have, Samuel? Um, yeah, I think I think it's going to uh, I think it's getting ready to get um, ugly, to be honest with you. Within maybe, um, I'm gonna say about a few months from now. So, um, well, it, it's already getting ugly because our economy is really a basket case. I mean, we have yeah. 94 million people here. They claim we only have 5% unemployment, and yet we have 94 million people with no jobs. You know right. how they do that? They, they do that by a gimmick. And the gimmick is as long as you're not applying for unemployment pay – or as long as you're not applying for a job through the unemployment department, they don't count you as unemployed. They don't even count you at all. The real unemployment rate here is probably between 20 and 25 percent. But because right. all those people are living on welfare, for example, if you today, Samuel, went to Hawaii, you know how much they'd give you as welfare just to lay on the beach or go surfing? In Hawaii, they will pay you a little over $60,000 a year to do nothing. Right. Therefore, why would any sane person work? Right. I mean, I mean unless, you could, unless you could earn significantly more than $60,000 a year, uh, it's in your interest just to take the welfare check. And when right. you create a society like that, in which future elections will just be bidding wars, I mean, this is the problem Hillary Clinton's having against socialist Bernie Sanders, for example. Whatever Hillary says, uh, Hillary says, I'll give you affordable college. Bernie Sanders stands up and says, to heck with that, I'll give you free college. He just outbids her for everything. He just offers to give people even more money. Now, does he have any source of that money that he could actually uh, pay off under? No. I mean, he's just saying, well, we'll raise taxes to 90% for the people who run businesses here. Oh, yeah? How long do you think they'll stay here and run businesses if you're taxing them 90%? Not very long. And that's the challenge. <clears throat> so what he's really saying is, we're going to just run off enough money from the printing presses forever and ever that uh, that you will live the new modern lifestyle. A lifestyle that Aldous Huxley, by the way, foresaw in his uh, dystopian novel Brave New World back in the 1930s. You know what your life would be like, Samuel? Number one, there will be no more jobs for humans, really. I mean, there'll be a few, but almost all the work will be done by robots. When they say to yeah. McDonald's, you're going to have to pay people $15 an hour, most of those jobs at McDonald's can be automated by robots for less than $15 an hour. You buy one robot, and the technology is now very close to being online. You buy one robot, it will work 24 hours a day, it will never call in sick. Uh, it will almost never break down. It will work 24 hours a day. It will not complain. It will not picket your store. And by the way, this picketing is really one of the most cynical things I've ever seen. It's paid for, by the way, by big labor unions like SEIU, the Service Employees Union International. You, you know why? The big unions want it because they have clauses in their contract that if the minimum wage is raised by 7 or $8 an hour, 
then the union wage in their contract is automatically raised by the same amount. So they automatically get a seven or eight dollar raise if they can get the hamburger flipper a seven or eight dollar an hour raise, even though ultimately there will be almost no fifteen dollar an hour hamburger flippers. Their jobs will be automated, and so a few of them will get a meaningful amount of money, and all the rest who have jobs now will simply be fired. They'll be gone. So ultimately, you're Correct. screwing eight out of every ten people who have a job at these fast food places now. And that's going to be true across the workspace. All of the work will be done by robots. The companies that run the robots will be heavily taxed. And then you, uh, Samuel, you will be given a 10 by 10 foot apartment to live in. That's why they're making it fashionable to have these little miniature houses now. Uh, and in that house, <coughs> the government will make sure you can afford a really great 3D virtual reality system. Yeah. Uh, so that you can experience traveling the whole world and doing amazing things while just sitting on your sofa as a couch potato. Uh, wow. And and you will then we will move quickly to the technology that Aldous Huxley called the feelies. The feelies mean. You will not only see and hear actors in a movie doing something, you will actually, through electrodes on your fingertips or brain, you will feel the emotions that they are feeling. And the old movies that were done in black and white and then colorized, they will be redubbed to have actors whose only job is to pump emotions into the characters. And you will have robots right. who can provide for your sexual gratification. Uh, and and you will, of course, ultimately have Soma. You will have the drug that smooths all of this over so that nobody gets too upset or asks too many questions. Uh, Huxley called it Soma. You notice it's not an accident. They're rushing to legalize marijuana across the country. And they will soon be legalizing other drugs that will simply keep everyone tranquil, that will right. keep everybody flatted out, that will reduce your current attention span from 30 seconds down to about 7 seconds. And then they will just feed you constant stimulation through the media. And you won't even notice that the reproduction rate of all the so-called working people in the country and all the people on welfare, the reproduction or fertility rate will be falling. Uh, we used to have a rate of 2.1 children per couple as recently as five years ago. But under Obama, the fertility rate in this country has fallen to 1.84, meaning we're not even reproducing our population anymore. We are already demographically doomed the way Europe is. In 50 years, there will be relatively few children in the United States. And it's at that point, the under, under Barack Obama, he has a science czar. His science czar's name is John Holdren. The science czar actually co-authored a book years ago in which he proposed putting chemical sterilants in the world's food and water supplies with the government controlling the antidote. So if you and your, and your spouse wanted to have a child, you would have to go to the government and apply for the antidote so you could have one child. And if the government doesn't there... like you, if the government thinks you have the wrong politics, for example, or the wrong ideas, or you are the wrong ethnic group or race, uh, you will just never get. Ima imagine what Adolf Hitler could do with that technology, Samuel. Adolf Hitler they would just say, you know, no Jews need apply for the antidote. Hitler would not even need to have death camps for Jews. He would just make sure the Jews could not reproduce anymore. And in one to two generations, the Jews would be gone. There would be no more Jewish children. That is what 
the science advisor to Barack Obama, is actually proposed. I mean, this is what it means to be a progressive, a person like Hillary Clinton. These are among the most evil people in human history. And the very thought that any American could ever consider voting for the likes of Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders is just insanity. You are voting to cut your own throat if you do that. They're the most anti-freedom people the world has ever seen. Anyway, that's my opinion. And mine alone. Well, it, I um, I am really uh, taking all this in, and I'm thinking, wow, a lot of a lot of things happening out there. I tell you that oh, a lot of things. Oh, Sam, Samuel, we have we have not even scratched the surface. It is much much worse than I've been able to tell you yet. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we, we can discuss that some other time. The point being, you're crazy now if you have a bank account. A bank account is just yeah. setting you up so the government can steal your money. Oh, they do have plans, by the way, uh, to do what they did in Argentina back in 2007, 2007, 2008. In Argentina, everyone woke up one morning to find that all their retirement accounts, their IRAs, their 401ks and the equivalent, had been confiscated by the government. Mm. And in their place, the government had created an annuity, a document based on government bonds of equivalent value to what they took from you. You would never be able to withdraw it and spend it all at once. And when you died, the government would take it all back. But... They gave you the annuity. The only catch is it was based on the face value of the government bonds. What was the real value, the market value of the government bonds? Oh, it was about 27 cents of the face value. So the government overnight stole almost three quarters of all the retirement account value of the people of Argentina. And Barack Obama has acknowledged, or his his planners have acknowledged, they're discussing them thinking about doing the same thing here. Oh, now that now that's whoa, 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 whoa. that's a that's we're that's a big worry to have on hands. Sounds like to oh, me. Oh, if 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 you knew what we had found in our research, but that's why we give people our books. For example, you will find a lot of this kind of information in our latest book. We have seen the future, and it looks like Baltimore. Progress, uh, American dream versus progressive dream. So you can see just how different the progressive mentality is. The progressives are not liberals. American liberals actually did believe in freedom. American liberals in the 19th century actually believed in free market economics like libertarians. Uh, the progressives are totally the opposite of that. The first Democrat progressive president was Woodrow Wilson. And Woodrow Wilson won only because there was a split in the Republican Party between President uh, William Howard Taft and Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt split right. the party, and that's how how uh, Wilson won. Woodrow Wilson once gave a speech saying that we progressives, he proudly said, we realize the Constitution is an old-fashioned, obsolete document. We are going to replace it. We even now are building inside the outer structure of the U.S. government a whole new system. <clears throat> and soon we are going to kick down the walls of the old constitutional system we're replacing. And we will show you our magnificent new uh, superstructure for society and government. It will, said Wilson, be like one giant perfect beehive. He literally said what they're planning for all of us is a beehive. Now think about that. Does anyone have freedom in a beehive? No. No. You have no freedom at all. Uh, there are only three kinds of creatures in a beehive. Well, four, technically. Um, there's the queen who lays all the eggs. There is the worker bee, 
who has to go out and look for honey or pollen all day long. And the worker bees typically live only two weeks and then die of exhaustion. And they're just left to die. Uh, there are the drones, who are a tiny handful of... See, all the worker bees are female. But uh, the drones are males, and their only purpose is to go have a mating flight with the queen. And to... Ins- and this is my impression of a drill instructor directing a musical. Town hut! Get those tap heels in line and let me see those jazz hands! Are you bundling your home and auto insurance through Progressive? Can you hear me through those sequins? Bundle your home and auto through Progressive and save. Left, left, left and step ball change. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates, home insurance provided and serviced by other select insurers. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a drill instructor directing a musical. Town hut! Get those tap heels in line and let me see those jazz hands! Are you bundling your home and auto insurance through Progressive? Can you hear me through those sequins? Bundle your home and auto through Progressive and save. Left, left, left and step ball change. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates, home insurance provided and serviced by other select insurers.